Y'all ever seen one of these books like this? Yeah. I love these books, but it just sucks all my time sometimes. Uh, like it'll have something like, uh, like on this page right here, to ask you to find a green paper clip. And if you don't know where the green paper clip is, you just look on it and just look at it and stare at it forever and you just are sure that there's no green paper clip in there. And then all of a sudden when you see it, it's like, well, there it is all the time. Now it's no problem seeing it. It's funny like that, isn't it? There's all kinds of stuff in there. Some of these books, I'm not this guy. Yeah, at the back, it'll, it'll give you things that you can go and find. And so you'll go through and, you know, find different shades and different things. And I love these books. They're fun. Uh, it, it keeps you busy, though, right? It's funny how you can look right over something, never really see it, and then all of a sudden, when you see, oh, but before you saw it, you were just sure that it wasn't in there. You just see it. And that's funny. And, and you know, uh, I do that sometimes with things in the Bible. I had a friend of mine that told me something last week, and I had never thought about it. Never seen it. But it is the coolest thing. I love this. I'm going to read it to you, okay? Uh, maybe I, you probably you might have already thought about this sometime, but I never caught it. I want you to listen very carefully and see if you catch a, a special point here, okay? This is out of Mark chapter 1. Everybody sit up and listen because we're reading out of God's Word. Start with, with verse 35. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him, and when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, Let us go somewhere else to a nearby villages so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. A man with leprosy came to him and begged him on his knees, If you are willing, you can make me clean. Filled with compassion, Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, to be clean. Immediately the leprosy left him and he was cured. Jesus sent him away at once with a strong warning. See that you don't tell this to anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifice that Moses commanded for you for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Instead, he went out and began to talk freely, spreading the news. As a result, Jesus could no longer enter a town openly, but stayed outside in lonely places. Yet the people still came to him from everywhere. Did you catch that? Why, why would Jesus have met the man when he was on his way to town? He hadn't gotten to town yet, and he met this man. Why would he have met him outside of town? Why, would that, why was that guy outside, outside of town? Caleb? He had leprosy. And if you don't know what leprosy is, leprosy is a terrible disease. And they still have it, but they have a cure for it now. But back then, it's awful, and it makes your skin do awful things, and it, it hurts you. Sometimes you lose fingers and stuff, and it's a terrible thing. And so if you got leprosy, you couldn't live with your family anymore. You had to go outside the city and stay way out in the wilderness. As a matter of fact, if people, if you were sitting there and you saw somebody walking up, if you had leprosy, you'd have to holler out, Unclean! That told them, you can't come around me. Stay away from me. You can't be near me. And so they had a very lonely and sad life, didn't they? Because they couldn't be around their family or friends. They had to live way out by themselves. So Jesus was on his way to town, and he meets this guy with leprosy. He's, not, he's outside the city. And the man comes and begs Jesus, please heal me. If you're willing, you can. And Jesus said, I am willing. And he healed the man. And he told him to go back and tell He said, don't tell anybody, but go back and show the priest, and, and you can go back and live with your family. Well, the man couldn't help it. He was so happy. He starts telling everybody, hey, look what this guy did for me. I don't have leprosy anymore. And I'm sure, you know, you can just imagine how happy. He probably ran into town and hugged his mom and his dad and his brothers and sisters and went to all his friends and, you know, just, man, he was so glad to be back in town with everybody and be able to go back to his normal life, not have to be alone anymore. What happened to Jesus in that story? Did you catch it? This little line again. 
Instead, he went out and began to talk freely, spreading the news. As a result, Jesus could no longer enter a town openly, but stayed outside in lonely places. <laughs> there were so many people. Once the man goes into town, and he's so happy, and he's telling everybody, there were so many people that wanted to go and see Jesus and touch Jesus and get Jesus to help them and do something for him that there was just a crowd all the time, and he couldn't even go into town anymore. He had to stay out in the lonely place and be by himself. There's a really cool point there that I missed. That's a great picture. Just like in this book, you look over something and you never see it, and then all of a sudden, you see it. It's kind of hidden. This is a great picture of how Jesus was a substitute for that man. This man had to stay out and be a lonely person and live outside the town and couldn't be around his family. And so Jesus healed him. The man goes back into town, and now Jesus took his place. He? he had to stay out. He, he had to be lonely now. He couldn't go into the town. That's a neat picture of what Jesus is about to do. Jesus, not only did he take that man's place, and nobody would have probably really caught that then, but I hadn't even caught it until last week. But he does that over and over and over. Jesus takes our place. Jesus went to the cross not long after that. And he died. He paid not for his sins, because he didn't have any sins. He paid for my sins and for your sins. And for your mom and dad and your preacher and all your friends and our teachers. Everybody. Everybody's sin. Jesus paid for that. He took our place. Just like that man that had leprosy, I'm supposed to be the one that hangs on the cross. I deserve it. Not him. But he took my place. He said, you go have a good life. You go have blessings. And enjoy the blessings that God gave you. And I'm going to take your punishment. There was something, I read something on, on the, online about uh, a whipping boy. Anybody know what a whipping boy is? A long time ago over in England, it was against the law to whip a prince. A prince couldn't be touched by anybody except the king. And if the prince needed a whipping, the king could whip him. And nobody else could. But the king was always off doing busy stuff. And so the people that took care of the prince, if he did something wrong, they'd have to punish him. How would they punish him? They couldn't spank him. So they would get a, a best buddy. They would let his best buddy live with him. Spend the night with him and have fun with him and just grow up with him. And they, they really wanted them to be good, close friends. And that way, if the prince did something wrong, they'd take his buddy and spank him right in front of him so he could see the little boy get a spanking. They couldn't touch him, but you're going, if you do something wrong, I'm going to spank your best friend hard right in front of you. And that would make the prince feel bad. And what happened is, these guys would grow up together, and then usually, when the prince became king, he would give that whipping boy some kind of great position, you know, a duke or whatever that is, you know, and let him put him up in a fine house and all this kind of stuff. But that'd be kind of weird, wouldn't it? You do something wrong, they grab your best friend, give him a spanking right in front of you, and say, this is for what you did. I'm going to spank your friend. That's what Jesus did. He's our substitute. When you do something bad, that's what he pays for. He paid for it. And that's kind of weird to think about. I'm glad that God did that. I'm sad that he had to go through all that. I'm sad that I disappoint him and I do things that are wrong. But I am so glad because you know what? If that didn't happen, we couldn't go to heaven. We, we have no hope. You can't go to heaven if you do anything bad. But Jesus stepped in and said, you know what? I'm going to take that punishment so now they can go. Man, that's a great thing. What a what a great gift. And I was really excited to see that little that little picture of Jesus yet again stepping in and being a substitute for that poor man that had leprosy. And he did it without even thinking. He was, Jesus was glad to do it because that's kind of what he does. He helps us. He takes care of us. He loves us. I'm glad that we serve a Savior like that. Aren't you? We can think about that today. When we, when we go into our classroom, we need to remember the kind of love that Jesus has for us and try to love each other in that same way.